bring it up for just a second, but let's bring it down just for a moment. Hey, good morning, everyone. Let's, let's do something this morning. Let's say this. Say, Lord, I choose today to raise my expectation. Now, this is, your, your expectation might just be your imagination. It might just be your wonder. It might just be your what if, what if. But there's something that's different about today. There's something obviously significant today, which is Resurrection Sunday. But listen, listen, listen. He already is. And, and so maybe the difference may be just in us today. That our change, our expectation, us opening up this morning may be the difference to catch up to what he's already done. Yeah, say hallelujah. It actually means praise the Lord. So say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't just do two. You got to do one more. Give me one more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Now listen, this is especially where I want you to open up your expectation, your imagination, your what if God can do anything. In him was life, and that life was the light to all men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And some translations say darkness cannot overcome the light. What do you look like today, Lord? What do we look like today as you expose your light on us, in us, through us? In fact, Lord, we would raise up our expectation today. Can you stand with me, please, as I pray this? Lord, we would raise up our expectation today. Lord, let your presence come. Let your goodness come. Lord, let your kingdom come to this place as we celebrate what you have already done, but raise up our faith and our expectation and our imagination today to what you want to do. Lord, we declare today as we worship you, let us declare, Lord, that in you is only life and light, and even darkness has to run today. It has to flee today. It's got to move today. And Lord, the things that we've been contending with, Lord, you today are overcoming as we raise up our faith and our expectation of who you are and what you've done. In Jesus' mighty name, say hallelujah. Now, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your angels that minister in this place today. Now, God, as we worship, would you move on every person and every heart and even bring to remembrance things that we have believed before, things that we've seen before, even from our youth, God. You're able to do this and to restore us back to our first love. In Jesus' mighty name. We're going to worship in just a moment, but can you bring the music up, please? Just bring it up. Bring it up. This is a moment for you to just begin to press into his presence. We'll do the worship thing. We'll do all of that because it's in our hearts to do it. But just worship him now and press in now to his presence.
nothing new. How could I express all I'd rather do? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song. Throw up my hands and praise you again and again. It's all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. When I know it's not much, nothing else fit for a king, except for a Just one with my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again.
of Come On My Soul. We're going to do that in just a moment. Your experience may be different than what's happening here this morning. What you've experienced in Jesus might be different, and maybe this is a little bit out of your comfort zone, but I'm asking you this morning, move aside what you think, move aside your experiences, and allow yourself to worship the Lord. You actually have an expression on the inside that was made just for this moment. You were made for worshiping Jesus. So Lord, this morning we choose to put aside any of our other experiences and just to press into you. God, we declare that you're good and we determine to seek out your goodness this morning. And Lord, as much as it depends on us, we determine to tell our soul this morning to worship the Lord. Yeah. So let's do that this morning. Guys, if you can lead us back in.
me down It's faithful to generation So why would he fail now? He won't Yes, Lord He won't Silence. 
against the post of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you, you are raised to life again. For you have no rival, you have no try something this morning. Let's just try no music and no guitar and no amplification and no microphones. How about just us? And you guys, would you, would you lead us in to what a beautiful name it is and would you let us join you in worshiping Jesus this morning? So you guys, you guys lead us in. We'll sing if it doesn't work out, it's all the pastor's fault, okay? But it's going to work out. It's going to work out. Look at the person beside you and say, you sound awesome. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So lead us in. What a powerful name it is, and we're going to sing with you. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand again. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, you guys sound awesome. Let's give the Lord a praise clap, please. so good. Lord, we're going to get around and greet each other in a moment, but God, don't want us to just move too fast, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that in him was life, and that life was the light to all men. We bless you and welcome your presence here. In Jesus' name. Let's get around and shake some hands and greet someone. Just say good morning. Glad you're here.
Alleluia. Amen. So good to be in the house of God today. Amen. Aren't you glad you're here? Yeah, we have people in our midst that have uh, lost family members. We have people that have are celebrating new births. We have everything in the body of Christ. And you know, in Jesus, we get everything, don't we? Comfort for those who mourn. Celebration for those in places of celebration. Amen? I'm so glad. We're a mixed bag of marbles, and it's supposed to be that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Who was able to attend the Good Friday service? Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Do we have those pictures, Ray? I, we try. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it was really, it was, it, it's amazing when we just come together. You know, it's awkward when we come together, but it's, it's like that good kind of awkward. Yeah, it's family. And I believe those blue lights are angels. And they were in, they were, yes, they, everyone, it was just awesome. I love how we as churches can come together. And you know, it's all volunteer stuff. It's all volunteers, everyone. Our greeters did a bang up job. I love our greeters. Yeah, and our prayer people. It was just really awesome. It was, it was really awesome. But there was something about today. There's something about waking up on Resurrection Sunday morning. And if you spend any time thinking about Good Friday, then you certainly think about Sunday morning. So I want you to point to your neighbor and say, He has risen. Now point to your other neighbor. Come on, Canadians. We don't want to miss anyone. We do it everywhere, all at the same time. And <laughs> You know, it's a true story. It's a true story. You can bet your life on it. He did. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Oh, man, we need a drummer. Hey, that was a ba bump right there. So we just want you to, if you have a Facebook app, we'd love you to open up your Facebook app and share the gospel on your Facebook. And there are people on your friend's feed. They need the Jesus that you represent. Amen? And we welcome those that are already online. We just have a few uh, announcements. This uh, next Sunday, we're going to have a baby shower for Cora. And I have emailed most of you ladies that I have your emails. But as a church, we would, uh, we'd love to just come around this new mom and help her. Who knows raising kids is the hardest job in the world? Yes, and the dads put their hands up too. Yeah. And that manual that they say comes with every child, it's not true. The only manual that we have that's the same is the Holy Bible. And even on sometimes, if you smack that baby slightly with it, it will help them sleep. But not too hard, of course right yeah it's the word yeah so please will you let me know after the service or sometime this week if you can come we would love to just come around Cora and celebrate her and little baby Nina and uh, that's what we're called to do right yeah older ladies train up the younger ladies and for those of us that have adult ch adult children are amazing I love my adult girls. I love it. I loved every stage of them, but there's times, you know, when um, those babies wake up and <laughs> all you parents with young ones will be sleeping six hours plus is like a gift straight from heaven, like an uninterrupted sleep. And so that's for next Sunday at two till five. So I'd love to see our ladies here. If you're visiting, we invite you ladies, men, you know what? We're going to go a little old school and you can't come. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't come, honey. I'm sorry. But we ladies can't because we can talk about lady bits. We can talk about things that we don't have to. Enough said. Okay, next Sunday, let me know. Let me know. Please, after, so we can make sure that we have enough space for everybody. At the end of April, we have Women's Conference in Grand Prairie. And we would love to represent our La Clabiche like we always do with a busload of people that go down to Grand Prairie. There is a poster in the lobby that I think you can, I think it's a QR code. If not, it has instructions on how to register. It's just 35 bucks to register. And then uh, there's no meals or anything. So you can plan like a little girl's meal. And it's going to be a real great time.
time. Amen? Our kids, our kids have already gone already? Okay, we can release our little ones. There was a lot more than... There we go. Oh, there they just start coming out of everywhere. I love that. There you go. That's awesome. And then we'll just move right into offering. So uh, turn to your neighbor and say, you're blessed. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, you're blessed. We have a, a few different ways that we give. We find like... The e-transfer is the easiest, and we'll just leave that up for you if you like. We have a debit machine in the lobby. We also have the little holy black box at the bo at the back of the room that's just on the wall. If you need an envelope, well, our ushers can get you one. Uh, and when you drop your envelope in that little black box, we ask that you would hold on to somebody because the power of God in your generosity, it might knock you out. It might not, but just that's our disclaimer. God's power is God's power is God's power. Yeah. And so we just have that little box. We don't pass the bucket around. And I'm so thankful. That darn bucket. It always jingled when it came my way. And I think, come on. <laughs> so the e-transfer, if this is your first time giving, can you please put your, uh, your full name and your address in the notes so that we can make sure we get a tax receipt for you? And Pastor Darren would love to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, there's nothing that's greater than you. Nothing. God, we thank you for the life and the expression and the power that is in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, even this morning, even when it comes to offering, Lord, I want to speak forth, even prophesy forth brand new beginnings for peoples and families and marriages and Lord, uh, brothers and sisters and things that have been in the way before, I speak brand new beginnings in Jesus' mighty name. And even when it comes, Lord, to offering again, Lord, I thank you that no government, no tax, no devil can steal your goodness. Father, I bless your people right now. I bless them. And Lord, I thank you for that blessing that even overtakes us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that your blessing is greater than the grave. It's greater than attitudes. It's greater than pessimism. Lord, it's greater than anything that would come up against. So let your suddenly, in the way of your grace and blessing, overtake your people, even to our great surprise. Lord, I thank you that your generosity causes generosity in us. So, Lord, I'm going to thank you for an explosion of your goodness, even in this new season, in Jesus' name. May you be overtaken by the goodness of God. May you be surprised by the goodness of God. And may your own liberality be blessed, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give the worship team a hand? They did a great job. Thank you, Lord. We have special guests this morning. We have our pastors from Grand Prairie who have been our pastors for about 230 years, I think, something, something close to that. <laughs> yeah, before there was color. Yeah, way back then. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they, they actually have founded the, the Grand Prairie Church. Uh, my goodness, the things that you have done, Bible schools and, and wonderful things, and now you are uh, regional overseers of all the Victory Churches district. My goodness, I think that you're ready for rapture. So this might be the last time we see them before God takes them because of the good things that they have done. Yeah, they're staying for a little while. Can we do something this morning? Even as, as Pastor Paul comes, if you would receive a, a prophet, a pastor in the name of the Lord, I believe that you receive their gift too. So can we give uh, Pastor Paul a hand as he comes? And in doing so, you're actually saying, Lord, would you allow your gift to flow through this man as well? So give him a hand as he comes. Amen. 
Wow. Wow. Now give your pastor a big clap too. We've had so much fun over the years, uh, Pastor Darren and I and Angie and my wife Jan. Maybe Jan, just get up, take a spin. That's my wife Jan. She's 35 going on 38. And uh, you know, my mom never told us to, uh, the kids how old. It used, to be, it used to be rude to ask your mom how old she was, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, so it's so good to be here. We are excited. We were just in St. Albert for Good Friday with Pastor... Uh, Noel and his wife Tamara at the Victory Church there in St. Albert had a great time there. So we're just kind of coming in the afterglow of that meeting. And I believe that this morning it's just going to be a continuation of what started there. And uh, I think we were praying with people till 2.30 in the afternoon and God moved mightily in that service today, at that day on Good Friday. So uh, Father, I'm so thankful today to have the privilege, Lord, to even stand in this pulpit. I'm humbled. Every time I've asked to speak, to think that, uh, Lord, you could use someone like me uh, to bring your word, to be trusted with it. And so, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the privilege. And I just confess that, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. I won't even attempt it. But, Father, with you, all things are possible. So, Lord, I thank you that in weakness, Lord, your strength is perfected. Perfect your strength in me today. And... God, just open each one of our ears and each one of our hearts to receive not just information, but revelation from your word today that will change our lives forever. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're not going to waste any time. Uh, Just get right into the word. And I'm going to have that little clip getting ready in a moment. I'm going to read a few scriptures and then we'll play that, okay? And just kind of set the tone of what God's going to do here this morning. Are you ready? (laughs) So, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, and I'm going to read it in three different translations. And uh, so maybe I'll just read it first of all in the New King James, which I often use. Uh, Romans 8, 11, most of us will know that verse fairly well. And this being resurrection morning, it's the perfect scripture for today. And, uh, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, say me, say us, say we, amen? If that spirit of Jesus that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our, to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Where does he dwell? Where does he dwell? Where does he dwell? Not just in heaven or somewhere out there. He dwells in you. The same spirit, the resurrection life that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in each one of you sitting here today if you believe in Jesus Christ. So let's, let's just say a prayer right now. Just put your hand on your heart and say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe this morning that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He is your Son. And you sent him into the world to die on a cross for us. I realize today that I'm a sinner, that I need salvation. So I cry out right now to you. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, all my trespasses, from birth to death, in Jesus' name. And I acknowledge and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and that by believing in Him, I pass from death unto life, from darkness unto light. I'm a brand new creation. All old things pass away, and behold, all things have been made new. And that the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, I believe, dwells in me and is quickening me right now in your presence. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, something's happening in the room right now. Literally, your bodies are being healed right now. Do we believe that this is actually Easter morning? This is Easter morning, resurrection. 
Sunday. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from that grave. You know, we were contemplating that yesterday and talking a little bit about this, but Easter Saturday was the day that Jesus spent in hell. Can you imagine that? That Jesus actually descended into hell before he ascended into heaven. And what was he doing in hell? He was getting the keys with your and my name on them. There's Paul Just, there's Darren Work, there's all the different people here. He was going through all the keys that were hanging on the wall in hell. And he was just grabbing all the keys that he could get. Took him a whole day to do it. And uh, there was a lot of people down there. And uh, he was defeating hell, death, and the grave. Amen? And then the same Spirit, then Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, the Father, sent the resurrection life of the Holy Spirit to go and to rescue His Son and to resurrect Him and bring Him out of hell. Amen? And He is triumphant this morning, and He is alive. Now, is anybody excited about that? Amen? So I want to bring that down to a very practical level today, even just dealing with these mortal bodies. I haven't seen so much sickness around in the church for a long time. We were talking to our pastors, Bill and Barb Retzlaff, up in Hay River the other day, and they were saying that their morgue is so full that they, are, they can't put any more body, bodies in it. Amen? There's so many suicides and deaths all through the north that the morgues can't handle the bodies. If there's ever been a time that we need to know and understand and have a revelation of the resurrection life of Jesus, it's right now. More than ever before. Amen? So, I'm going to read this verse again in the Passion Translation, regardless of what you think of the Passion Translation. I'm going to read it anyway. Yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, where does he live? In you. In me. He will raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. Amen. Now, here's something interesting about your body. Your body actually starts dying the moment you're born. Amen. It starts to deteriorate because of sin. Before sin was in the world, there was no death. The body would live forever. Adam and Eve were going to live forever and all their children. And all the descendants of Adam and Eve were going to live forever. They were told to, to subdue the earth. Amen? They were told to have dominion on the earth and to reproduce what they were experiencing in paradise to spread that over the whole earth. But they failed in their mission. Sin came into the world, and the moment sin came into the world, death entered. Amen? And so, is anybody glad that Jesus came? Yes. Wow. So, this, whole, this body, even though it's, it, it's dying, all right? But we got good news this morning. I want to read it in the Amplified. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to your life, your mortal life, uh, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Jesus told his disciples at the grave of Lazarus, and Mary and all the people that were there, he said, if you believe in me, you will never die. Now, we know that's not our physical body. But you know, I believe that God has given us a physical body through the redeemed work of Jesus, that he's given us a physical body that should last us till the time it is to go. And it should be healthy so that we can serve him. Isn't it hard to serve Jesus with COVID? Snotty nose. Amen. Sore joints. God wants us well. And, and this morning, I'm, I'm just going to really give you basics on healing 101. Just some truths that we need to take a hold of so that this year, 2024, the year of the open door, we are going to live healthier than we've ever lived before. That all rhymed. Amen? So we have a little clip here. And I have a granddaughter who was born with club feet. And both feet were completely turned the opposite direction. Her name is Abby. And uh, I remember holding her in my arms in the hospital. And I just prophesied and declared over her that she was going to be a dancer. You know what she's doing today at 14? She teaches dance classes at 14 years old. 
Amen. So let's just play that little clip. I want you to see this and turn it up so that we can really hear what's going on there. This is in Brazil. Look at how short that lake is. That's in Brazil. That would be Portuguese that you're listening to there. I've seen literally hundreds of those miracles in my lifetime. Um, I don't know why the Lord has blessed me with uh, we different ones of us. We walk in different anointings. And, and uh, wherever I go in the world, I see people's legs grow out, arms grow out, parts of their bodies grow out. And um, it's amazing what God can do. But just talking about that healing power of God this morning, and I think there's some things that we need to address as a church that, that somehow the church is bought into a lie. And here's the truth I believe that we need to look at today, that we are not the sick trying to get healed. 
We have to stop looking at our way, our, ourselves that way. We are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed, and sickness is trying to afflict us. If you can catch that revelation in your heart, you won't tolerate sickness in your body any longer. There's a scripture in Revelations in chapter 2 and verse 20, I believe. And uh, he was talking to the church there. And he was saying, why have you tolerated Jezebel? The things that we tolerate, we empower. And sickness has become so normal in the church that we've made it a part of, we've accommodated it. Instead of dealing with it radically. And here's a question, if, if God makes us sick, we have no business praying for the sick or even going to the hospital to get well. These are just prime, this is just healing 101. And I love going to the hospital. I love praying for the sick. Pastor Darren, we were talking about it last night when they were first saved. We dragged them down to the hospital in Grand Prairie and, and uh, we prayed down in the prayer room there for a little bit and I said, well, let's go. And we would just go from room to room. I love those cold calls. You know, when you don't know people and you just pray for them in their beds and they get healed from room to room. And so took Darren and Angie and they were just trembling, you know. <laughs> but uh, you get over your fear real fast uh, when you start loving people. You know, it's not even a matter of, loving, of healing them. It's a matter of bringing the love of God to them. There wasn't anybody that Jesus dealt with that was sick that he didn't heal. The scriptures continuously say he healed them all. And what greater expression of God's love is there than seeing somebody healed from an affliction? Cancers, bipolar, psych brain problems. What greater thing could we bring to, to the lost than that? And Jesus was our example of that, of, of course. And so, you know, going to the hospital or trying to get healed would really be against the will of God if God is the one that makes you sick in the first place. Amen? Jesus was in a boat on, in, on Lake Galilee, and a storm came up out of nowhere. And uh, here's the truth. If God sent that storm, then why would Jesus rebuke it? Would he rebuke his own father? Where do these storms and where do these sicknesses come from? He commanded it to stop. And it stopped instantly, and the sea was completely calm. Amen? And so it's a different mindset. What we accept and tolerate, we empower. And I believe that today we can turn this thing around by thinking oppositely and thinking more like the Word of God wants us to. You know, Psalms 103 is powerful. I've always liked this. It says, Blessed be the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord God of my soul and forget not all of his benefits. You know, we have some benefits as being children of God. Number one, he forgives all our iniquity. Number two, he heals all of our diseases. Number three, he redeems our lives from destruction. Number four, he crowns our lives. Do you know that you have a crown on this morning? You know, one day you're going to go to heaven and you're going to throw that crown at the feet of Jesus. Amen? And worship Him with the crown that He's given you. And number five, He's going to satisfy or He's going to fill your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen? Moses led his whole life being well and healed right up to the time of his taking. And even when he was taken, he wasn't sick. It says that God took him. He even took his bones and hid them so that they wouldn't worship them. Later on, Elijah, was uh, after he was uh, uh, put in a grave, a dead body was thrown into the same tomb as Elijah was in, and the body was resurrected. So the same resurrection life that was in Elijah was still in his bones while they were laying in the ground, and a man was resurrected from the dead just from that. What about walking through? Uh, West Edmonton Mall, and, and you're just walking through, minding your own business, and the glory of God resting upon you. People going by you in wheelchairs, and you're not even noticing they're jumping out of their chairs as you're going by them. 
Is that biblical? You bet it is. It says that Peter, just by his shadow, passing by with his shadow, all those that were sick were healed. Every one of them. I wonder if that could happen again. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are the body of Christ. God can still do that. Jan and I were in a hospital room in, in Kenya, Kisumu, Kenya one time, uh, full of children. And uh, one of the hardest things is being around children that are sick. And we prayed for that whole ward, and the ward was empty the next time we went. Amen? So, what about going to a hospital and emptying the hospital? Why are the hospitals the largest buildings in most towns and communities? The church should be the largest. And I wonder before the coming of Jesus, if we're going to see that, we'll convert the hospitals to churches. Amen? Why not? In the last day, if we really believe this. If we really believe this. So even David, as an Old Testament believer, had a revelation of the be benefits of Yahweh's promises. Amen? And I believe that David li most likely lived in divine, uh, d d divine health. I can't find a scripture where David was ever sick. Because I believe that he confessed this. If not daily, he confessed it often. He had a relationship. He had a new covenant relationship in the Old Testament. Because he had a revelation of Jesus. Psalms 22 he actually saw the resurrection of Jesus on the cross or the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross before it ever happened. David lived in New Testament revelation. He worshipped New Testament worship. Amen? And he had something that I believe that the church desperately needs today. Amen? So how can we pray in faith for someone who is sick if God is the one that made them sick in the first place? You're actually going against God himself. And I can't find one prayer in the Bible where they have to rebuke God to get somebody well. Amen? And that's so important. You know, John 10.10 10 is a powerful verse. We all know it. It says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you every every." Thing in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until it overflows. Everybody say overflow. Now that reminds me of Psalms 23. He prepares a table in the presence of what? My enemies. So my enemies aren't the real problem in my life. He actually sets a table before them. And then what does he do? It says that my cup does what? It runs over and it overflows. God wants us to have a life that's overflowing everywhere we go. And the stuff that's flowing out of us is touching other people. I prayed with a, a, actually a, a First Nations chief the other day on the phone. And this was really odd because I didn't feel anything specific. And he had phoned me from up near Fort McMurray. And I'd met him a couple times. And he was in the car going back to his, uh, where he lives there. And he, I just prayed a simple prayer for them and and they just began to weep and cry. I think they even had to stop the car. There should be something flowing out of our life all the time. The scripture talks about a fragrance of Christ that others will smell wherever we go. Here's the question for many Christians. What's flowing out of you? Judgment? Criticism? Critiquing other people? Comparing yourself? Jealous? Envy? All of those things can flow out of us in the flesh. But what if we were so mindful of the Lord's presence in us all the time that wherever we go, people are literally being touched just by your presence? There was a gal in uh, Safeway one day, and um, she was shopping, and I don't know if it was Christmas or New Year's or maybe it was even Easter, but I just said something very simply to her, uh, like... Uh, you know, have God bless you, or something like that. Or um, She came to the counter later on. She was weeping. And she said, I was so desperate for somebody just to acknowledge that I exist. 
And she just wept by the counter. And I was able to minister to her. Just something as simple as that. Just acknowledging somebody, just even looking them in the eye and saying, God bless you or have a good day. For some people, it could mean the difference between life and death. So many stories have been told where somebody was just going to go out and commit suicide. And somebody just acknowledged them. And they're alive today because of that. And so the influence that we have for good is absolutely incredible. Amen? And to be a part of a church like this one, with Pastor Darren and Angie, who believe in that, is incredible. Do you know this, the, the community of, of Lac La Biche is changing because of this church? One person at a time. Amen? Now, there's no perfect church. There's no perfect pastors. And there's no perfect congregants. The moment you walked into this church, it was no longer perfect. <laughs> you know that. Amen? So we're not, God's not looking for perfection in us. When the Bible says perfect, that word actually means mature or complete. And that's what God wants us to bring to that place of being mature and complete in everything. Amen? Perfection is a myth this side of heaven. And some of you that have been raised in perfectionist homes where you could never do anything right, it was a horrible way to live, wasn't it? You could never meet the standard of the person that wanted you to be perfect at everything you did. Now, I know Jan did something great with our girls. She just said, girls, we love you and do your very best. That's the definition of excellence. God's called us to be excellent like Daniel was. He had an excellent spirit. Amen? And excellence means doing the best with what you have. Amen? So that's what God's calling us to. So it goes on here to say, but, uh, so more, but I have come that you, to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. I am the good shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for my sheep. Great scripture for Easter Sunday. Smith Wigglesworth, the great evangelist, once said, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Wow. I like that, just cut and dry. Amen? I believe it. Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing how many? All who were oppressed of the devil. It's interesting how he, he links the oppression of the devil and sickness together. For God was with him. Let's say this together. God is with me. He promised he would never leave me or forsake me. That he would be with me until the end of this age and beyond. Wow. God is with us. And God is moving with us. So Jesus was never sick a day in his life. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. And I want to read that quickly. It says, surely, verse 4. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we might be healed. We are healed. It says that we are healed. It's past tense. You are the healed already. Start thinking of yourself as healed. What if you looked in the mirror every morning and said, gosh, you're good looking. Amen? And you're also healed in Jesus' name. Amen? I knew a guy one time, he hated himself. And you know, it's funny how many people hate themselves. And so the Lord showed him, he said, I want you to look in the mirror every morning and tell yourself that you love yourself. And so every morning, he'd get up in front of his mirror and he'd say, I love you. And he'd look himself in the eye. Some of you need to do that. Amen? Isn't it amazing that some of the most beautiful women in the world hate themselves because they think they're ugly? Here's the question. Who told them they were ugly? And who told you that you weren't handsome? It was in the Garden of Eden when God came to Adam and said, God, who told you that you were naked? So who told you these lies about yourself? Why have you believed them? 
And here's the thing about a lie. Whatever lie we believe, we must repent of it. It doesn't just go away on its own. When you believe a lie, you've done the exact opposite of what God has given you and promised to you. And it must be repented of. Say, Father, I repent of believing this lie. And now I ask it to go in Jesus' name. Who's the father of lies? Satan is the liar and the father of lies. And so when we align ourselves with the liar, we've stopped aligning ourselves with the truth. And then we reap the results of the lies that we're believing about ourselves. I used to think my nose was too long, and all the kids in school would, would make fun of me about my nose. They said they could land a 747 on it and have room to turn around. <laughs> Boy, I, broke, I busted a lot of noses, you know, in those days. I thought, you want a nose, a big one? <laughs> you know. But isn't that stupid? My nose is perfect for the size of my body. Isn't it? And you know what? Every part you've got on your body is just perfect for your body. If you want to slim it up a bit, you've got the right to do that and the power. But God made you just the way you are. Celebrate yourself. Put a sticker on your thing. God loves me and so do I. You're commanded to love yourself. Because to say I can't love myself means that God is a liar because He says He loves you. And you believe the lie about yourself. Sickness is the same way. We've accepted it as normal. And that's why we're struggling with it so much. Amen? So Jesus was never sick a day in his life. Bill Johnson said this from Reading. He said, when God made it possible for the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead to live in you and me, he made powerlessness inexcusable. He made powerlessness inexcusable. You and I will often feel so powerless. But here's the deal. You are not what you feel. You are what you believe and act upon. It's got nothing to do with feelings. It's got everything to do with faith. Amen? And that's so important to understand that. We need to now become afflicted with a limitless belief and faith. Matthew eleven twelve, 12, the kingdom suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. you got to get up and fight back. Instead of yielding to the lies and the things that the enemy is teeling and, and throwing at us. And there's no great violence around, and, and, and there's a great violence right now around our health and well-being. Violence. Violence against it. Four deaths just this week, or the last couple weeks in this church. The morgues in Hay River so full, they can't put more bodies in them. The world around us needs us desperately. Desperately. And so I'm going to do a commissioning this morning that we're no longer going to tolerate this. And we're going to be start to be the part of the solution instead of the part of the problem. Amen? Anybody want to be a part of that? So the largest buildings in our towns and cities shouldn't be the hospitals. They should be the churches. And what we tolerate, we empower. Revelations 2.20. Sickness is not tolerated by God, but often it is by the church. There's no sickness in heaven. And I know different teachings, and I know right across this room, we've all heard all kinds of different teachings. I love Rick Warren and uh, what he does there. And, but you know, different people will teach us in different ways. I've just chosen to believe that God wants us well. That his resurrection life is enough to change anything in me. If it could raise Lazarus from the dead when his body was rotting, how he can fix the little things in my body. Amen? He can fix the little things in your body. And he stinketh. Amen? But yet he rose from the dead. Amen? You know, wasn't it interesting that Jesus, when he rose Lazarus from the dead, it said that he was standing at the entrance of the tomb. Now, here's the deal. He must have supernaturally got to the entrance of the tomb because he was wrapped. They used to wrap them in claws, so he was wrapped, but he must have, God must have just zapped him, and there he was standing at the entrance of the tomb all wrapped in this stinking rag because his body was rotting, and he's standing there, you know. But isn't it interesting how Jesus didn't take the grave clothes off him? 
He told his disciples to do it. Here's the secret. God wants to include us in all of his miracles. And the greatest miracles that Jesus ever did included other people. How about feeding the 5,000? Amen? Other people. He wants us to get involved in the miracles. Say this with me. My life is a miracle. I wouldn't exist without a miracle. I believe I carry miracles wherever I go. Miracles flow out of my life for others. What if we believe that? Rex Crane is a, a, a motivational speaker. We've had him a few times in Grand Prairie. He's a beautiful guy. He's a, a former baseball, professional baseball player, filled with the Holy Ghost and power. But he teaches that. You're a miracle and you carry miracles. You know, I love what uh, the young man said uh, that uh, has no arms and legs. What's his name? Nick. Wojciech, he said this, until I get my miracle, I'll be miracles for others. And do you know how many thousands of people have been healed through his ministry without arms and legs? What's your problem? No arms and legs. He's married and has children now as well. Amen? And he's living a life that's incredible. And so if he can do that with no arms and legs... What could we do if we actually believe God and that the resurrection life that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us every day, whether I feel it or not? Faith has nothing to do with feelings. Now faith is the substance of things, what? Hoped for. And the evidence of things, what? Not seen. Wow. Romans chapter 4, verse 17 says, speaking those things that are not as though they are. So, here's the key. If you can't see it, and it doesn't exist yet, you're moving in the right direction. I'll say it one more time. If you can't see it yet, and it doesn't exist, you're actually moving in the right direction in faith. Amen? So here we are today, and many of you are going to be healed if you aren't already being healed right where you're sitting now. I have faith for that today. Amen. I believe that the resurrection life of Jesus. Why would we come to church on Easter Sunday if we didn't believe that? That the resurrection life of Jesus is flowing in this room right now. Healing mortal bodies like that little girl. Amen. Right now. Amen. Wow. So faith. So sickness is not tolerated by God, but often by the church and Doctrines of men, this is what doctrines of men do. They have to make their own doctrines about healing to accommodate the failure within the church of believing God. And so what we end up doing is, is building doctrines to accommodate our unbelief. And the whole church ends up sick. Amen. I remember a church that we were building in... Um, we were about building a church in Barrie, Ontario. Paul McCullough was the pastor at the time. He just recently passed away as, by, as well. But uh, we were in Ontario, and we'd driven by, drove by, or he went to the bank, actually, and they were trying to get money to build this new building. And, uh, and the bank, ma or whoever was there, the manager, whoever he was talking to, was a Muslim. And uh, they had just built a mosque out of solid uh, marble, uh, granite, marble, gold, was millions, almost $50 million. And they paid for it before it was finished. And she said to Paul, the pastor, she said, what's wrong with you Christians? That you have to come to a bank to borrow money from man to build a spiritual house for God. Yeah. And here we are as Christians, instead of going to Jesus first when we feel ill, we run to doctors and nurses. God bless our doctors and nurses. What's the first thing we do if we, somebody's sick or if you're in Tim Hortons, somebody's ill, we should be praying for them. Give God an opportunity to move in power. Well, somebody will say, well, what if they're not healed? Here's the real question. What if they are? What if they are? Every one of you, if you are a believer in Christ 
And you know Mark chapter 16, the last few verses, it says there, if you believe, that's all you have to do, if you believe, you'll lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Amen? You'll speak in new tongues. You'll cast out demons and raise the dead just as a believer. What if the church started operating that way before the coming of Christ? Amen? Now, would that be awesome? So I don't know about you, but I'm just going to just keep praying and believing God for miracles. Amen? Now, we did, uh, in Bible school, we, we were teaching our students uh, in Kenya there uh, one morning uh, how to raise the dead. And so we'd always go out in the afternoon right afterwards to go do what we learned in school the morning before. And uh, so we're out there. We went to the Russian hospital, this horrible place. And uh, at the time, it was pretty rough. And uh, five people in a bed. Uh, it was horrible. I could go on and on. Morgue doesn't work. Body's all rotting. It was horrible. But we'd go in there. Some days, the smell would be so bad that I, I'd vomit at the door before I went in. But we'd go in there, and we'd just start praying for people on their beds, and God just didn't do any miracles. One guy had AIDS, and he was in his bed, and he was literally, his body was starting to rot in the bed. And the doctors wouldn't even go in the room because it smelled so bad. And I said, well, guys, let's practice this. This guy's not quite dead yet, but let's, let's try it. So we prayed for him. He walked out of the hospital with us. See, why not? Why not? Amen. He's not calling rocket scientists to do this. He's calling his church. If you believe, do you believe? Yes, you can do it. And I want to put that challenge out to each one of you. Let's start being a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem. Amen? And if nothing happens, it's not up to you. It's up to God. Let God be God. And many miracles will happen or healings will happen after you've prayed. Healing, the gift of healing is normally progressive. But miracles are instant, like that little girl. Amen? And I love miracles when God does that. So now faith, so this is another uh, quote here. It says, faith actualizes or makes a reality of what it realizes. Faith actualizes what it realizes. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith takes what is unseen and brings it into the seen realm. Romans 4.17, who calls those things which are not, that do not exist, as though they did. Amen? Faith actualizes what it realizes. And Matthew 15 talks about that healing is the children's bread. Bread speaks of the necessities of life. We all need food to survive. Do you know that we all need healing as well to survive? That healing is our bread. So, Father, I thank you for bread today. Let's say this together. Put your hand just in front of you and say, Father, I thank you today that healing is the children's bread. And, Father, bread is a necessity of life. But healing is as well. And so right now, I rebuke every lie that I have believed about my physical well-being in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to cleanse me from believing any lies about my physical well-being. And right now, I accept my spiritual bread which is healing for my physical body from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I thank you for this divine wholeness that I have through Jesus Christ in Jesus' precious name. Here's the truth. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in me and quickening me, right now while I am standing and you are sitting there, the Holy Spirit is quickening your body right now. When you're driving down the road, when you're in the shower, the Holy Spirit in you is quickening you. Amen? You don't have to go to Benny Hinn. You don't have to go to Reinhard Bonke, even though it's great if you do. The Holy, same Holy Spirit that dwells in them dwells in you, and it's quickening you as well. Isn't that amazing? 
What if we believe that? What if we actually believe the Word of God this morning? Amen? In Mark chapter 1 and verses 40 and 42, there it talks about a leper that came to Jesus. And the leper said to Jesus, if you are willing, make me clean. Wouldn't that have been something if Jesus said, you know what? It's not the will of God to heal everyone. So I don't know if I think, I'm, I don't know if God wants to heal you today. So I'm not even going to pray for you. But here's what Jesus said. He said, I am willing to be cleansed, period. Boom! And he was instantly healed. From leprosy. Amen? And so that's the truth. John G. Lake, great man of God from Seattle, Washington years ago. I believe that he actually held the bubonic plague in his hand. And they put it under a microscope and it died in his hand. Because the spirit of God, the resurrection life of God was in him, destroyed that death thing that was in his hand. He said, beloved, for the sake of the lost and dying world, pay any price, get God's word and set the prisoners free. Anything, whatever it costs you. Smith Wigglesworth says this, if God's not moving, I'll move him. Now, you might think that's arrogant. It's not. God is waiting for faith. Every, here's the deal. Every need in the world, every child that's being, that's being uh, trafficked for sex uh, trafficking and all of the things that are happening, every starving child, every dying old man under a bridge, when Jesus said it is finished on the cross, he meant it. Every need in the world has been met. Who's the, head of the of, of, uh, who's the head of the body? Jesus. How many heads have you seen lately going around healing people? The Bible says he's the head, but we are the what? The body. When the body shows up, finally, at any need that there is in the world, God will work when faith is present. So you can't blame God for any need in the world because we, his body, his church, have been commissioned to go and to be his body wherever there is a need. Amen? Anywhere in the world. So Jan and I have traveled internationally all over the world. Wherever we go, God is meeting needs. So we had, a, again, another Bible college student, an older gentleman. He was a pastor. He was praying before we were going to go out to, to, to preach in the streets or go to the hospitals that day. And he says, go to the prisons, Lord. Go to the jails. Go to the hospitals. And and I stopped him. I said, stop your prayer of unbelief. God is already there. He's waiting for you to show up. Every need in the world is met already by God. He's waiting for his body to rise. And that's where the ministries of this church, whatever you are, whatever you, whatever you, you, Whatever makes you sad, mad, or glad, whatever touches your heart, whether it's orphans or old people or whoever it is, where you get passionate, where you cry, where you get angry, that's connected to your heart, that's linked to your calling. What if you started following through with that compassion when Jesus saw the multitude sick and without a shepherd, he moved with compassion and healed them all. What is the calling of our life? The calling of our life is obeying that passion of our heart. Could you imagine what could happen if we started doing that as a church? Right here in Lac La Biche. In Tim Hortons. I think that's one of the greatest churches in town. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you what. People get saved and healed and set free. There was a gal with a back issue the other day in, in Tim's in Grand Prairie there. Man, I just said, sit down, let's pray. Boom, she was healed right there. Everybody just sitting there, oh, you know. Why not? God wants to do great things, not just in this building on Sunday morning. This is just where we get stirred up. We hear testimonies. We get encouraged. And then we go back out to the battle. Church doesn't start on Sunday morning. Church starts on Monday morning. It goes all week long, every day that you get up. Amen? You put your feet on the floor in the morning. The devil says, oh, no, they're up again. Amen? Yeah. And then the Bible even says that, that you're seated above him in heavenly places. Amen? He has to read the bottoms of your feet when you go about your day. The scriptures say that wherever the sole of your feet will go, it's yours. 
holy ground. Amen? So that's so important. We can do more than we think we can through God. So God moves when we move. That's why the Bible says go. The moment you get up and go somewhere, you watch what God will do. Coming to church is not the fullest expression of your Christian experience. That's the very least that we can do. And we should. It's when we leave this building today and touch the world all around us. Amen? Let's stop having people believe that we're just Mormons. You know why? Mormons are very nice people. They treat people, or normally try to treat people really nice. Oh, you must be a Mormon. No, I'm not a Mormon. I'm a Christian. Amen? I actually believe in the Jesus of the Bible. It's not just enough to be a nice person. What if we start operating in what God's calling us to do? Amen? That we could change the world. So he's waiting for us to act in faith on what he has already accomplished on our behalf. Remember the dry bones of Ezekiel 37? You know, uh, Ezekiel looked over those bones and he said, you know, you know, Lord. But until Ezekiel spoke, nothing happened. And until you and I speak, nothing's going to happen. And what happened when he started speaking? Flesh started coming on those dry bones. Wow. Skin came on them. They became a great army. I wonder if there's an army out there laying there right now of people who don't know Jesus that are dead in their trespasses and sins. If we would go out and start speaking and prophesying over Lac Labish, declaring that this army shall live, every dead person in this community shall rise. Command flesh to come on those bones. Command life to come into them. And the Bible says it became a great army. Here's what I believe. There's a great army in every village, town, city in the world waiting for somebody who believes that God can resurrect them from the dead and that that army can rise up and transform the communities that you're living in. Amen? You know, we were privileged to be with Daniel Smith here a couple of weeks ago in Medicine Hat at the Alberta Linked meetings with Mark Brisbaugh. And uh, what a precious gal she is. And uh, we were able to pray with her. And she so appreciated it. With tears in her eyes. She appreciated it. And then I was looking in the, on Facebook the other day, but now she's going to be in Edmonton on the 11th of April. And guess who she's going to be with? At a Christian prayer breakfast in Edmonton at 6.30 in the morning on April 11th at the Expo Center in Edmonton. She's going to be on with, with a man by the name of Edward Graham. Guess who Edward Graham is? He's the grandson of Franklin Graham, the younger brother of Will Graham, the grandson of Billy Graham. He served in the military in the United States for 16 years, special forces. He had killed a man at some point in battle uh, some time ago, and just recently he had killed another man. And he actually found out that the young man that he had just killed was the son of the other man that he killed earlier. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Edward, if you'd put down your sword and take my sword, I'll change the world with you. So he laid down his arms. He laid down. He's, he's let go of the military. And he's going to be speaking with our premier on the 11th and preaching the gospel in Edmonton, Alberta. Pray for that meeting. I believe Daniel Smith is going to get born again. Amen? Why not? Through the grandson of Billy Graham, who prophesied that Canada was going to have a great revival and touch the world before he died. Could we believe that? And we can be a part of that. So we have Will Graham, actually. And we've been planning this for about seven years. I called the organization about seven years ago. I said, guys, would you come to Grand Prairie? We need you to come here and, and whatnot. And then COVID came and everything got put aside. But now... He's coming in November and doing, a crusade, not a crusade, but a celebration services in Grand Prairie. Hundreds, if not thousands of people are going to be saved in Grand Prairie in November. Revival is breaking out in Grand Prairie. Amen? And we've got uh, 
a time with him next week there. He's coming in person and just encouraging the troops as we're getting ready for that. If there is a need somewhere, God will look for someone who will stand in faith or stand in the gap for that need. And it will be met. John G. Lake again, when I saw the, when I saw the first time by the word of God that sickness was not the will of God, everything in my nature rose up to defeat the will of the devil. And he healed thousands. And even today, John G. Lake prayer rooms are still uh, all over the world. Healing rooms long after his death. And it's because he believed that, that, that God was not making us sick, but the enemy was. Every need in the world has already been met by his body. Jesus said it is fiz- finished. The Bible says he is risen. Start where you are. There's no condemnation in this. Whatever ground we've lost in the past, we can't make up. We just need to go forward. We just need to go forward. Start today. Start today where you are. And so when we move, God moves. Mark chapter 16, and verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs and wonders. Where we go, he goes to confirm his word. Wherever you go in the world. Amen. I'm going to say one more thing and then we're going to pray. John G. Lake said this as well. Healing is not always obtained by saying a prayer. It is obtained by obeying God. And in Mark 11, 25, it says that you can speak to mountains and mountains will move when you tell them to move. Now, those mountains are symbolic of the mountains that we face in life. We have many mountains. And he said, if you will say unto the mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, it says, and you don't doubt in your heart, you shall have what you say. And then he adds after that, incredible, interesting in verse 25, but says, when you pray, forgive. So what will stop us from moving those mountains? Unforgiveness in our hearts. And I'll just tell a short story in Mexico now in an orphanage that I lived in for about three years in the 80s. A young man was there from Vancouver Island, Victoria. He broke his back at 15 years old in a football accident. He was now just 20 or 21 years old. He came to, on a missions team to this orphanage where we were, and I was his host and work party coordinator. And the last night that they were there, we always normally had a corn roast that night, and we'd pray for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit or healed or whatever. And uh, he was sitting on a two-by-four rail, and um, he couldn't do much any of the days, but that night he was sitting on that two-by-four in the rail, and uh, it broke, and he fell on his back over, and he was just in excruciating pain. We put him onto a piece of plywood, and we carried him back to the bus that was specially rigged that he could lay flat when he traveled from Vancouver to Mexico, and um, we put him in there, and he's just weeping and wailing, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit just said, you know, he's, he's got unforgiveness. Deal with that, and... Um, I said to him, I said, Are you, you're angry, aren't you? And he said, I'm so angry. You're angry at God, aren't you? You blamed him for doing this to you, didn't you? And he said, yes. Yeah, God did this to me. And I, I'm angry. I don't want to use the word hatred, but anger normally turns to hatred if it's there long enough. And I said, would you forgive? Ask God's forgiveness for blaming him. And he had some issues with his dad, too. And I said, would you forgive them both? And so in tears, he asked God's forgiveness. And um, here's the deal. The next morning, he was playing basketball. Now, I, it was such a, an incredible miracle that took place there. I purposely drove back to Vancouver Island, all the way from Mexico on my way home to Brooks. I took a little jaunt over to Vancouver Island to, to go see his family and to look at the x-rays where the bone had grown into his back that had been missing. It was whiter than all the other bone in his back. And he was completely healed. He's never been the same since. Here's what blocks most healings. Unforgiveness in our heart. 
And so we're going to go one step further this morning uh, for healing for all of us in this room. Uh, and we're going to deal with that unforgiveness. And once that's gone, there will be no hindrance for your healing. Amen? So let's do that together. Just put your hand on your heart if you could. The Bible says that all the issues of life come out of our heart, that we're to guard our heart with all diligence. And really to guard it the most from bitterness, unforgiveness, and offense, which are the killers of our faith. And just say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I realize today that you wanted to heal me, but something in my heart has blocked its ability to do so. By faith right now, by an act of my faith and my will, I ask you, Father, to forgive me from every hurt in my life, from every abuse, from every usury, the pain that's been afflicted to me, and the hurts. I forgive that person. And the word forgive actually means to loose. When you forgive, what you're doing is you're actually untying a rope or a chain that's been chained to you. You will never be able to get past the people you have bitterness and unforgiveness towards because they're literally hanging around your neck. And that's why you think about them all the time is because they're right there with you. Used to be on the farm when a dog killed a chicken. You take the chicken and tie it to the dog's neck until it rotted off. And the dog would never kill another chicken. Some of us have got chickens around our necks. There's a smell. It's horrible. And our lives smell somewhat. But you know what? You are the only one that has the power to release it. So the word forgive means to let go or to release. So let's do that right now. Say this, Heavenly Father, I forgive, I let go, and I release every person who has hurt me from my birth till now, even generational sins and curses from my forefathers. I loose them now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that I'm a new creation, that all old things have passed away, and that all things have been made new. I walk in forgiveness every day. And I refuse to live an offended life, a bitter life. Lord, make me better and not bitter. In Jesus' name, I thank you now for setting me free. It's for freedom that Christ has made me free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty from every oppression. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you for healing all my afflictions. Your Word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers us from them all. Hallelujah. So right now, Lord, I thank you for delivering me from every affliction, every sickness, every disease, every virus, every bacteria, every cold, every flu. In the mighty name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my body, spirit, soul, and body. And I say in faith, you are healed. You are well. You are whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father.
Now, if you had a sore body part or something, I want you to start moving it. And just thank Him. Thank Him as you are. Thank Him as you are. Thank you for the healing that's flowing in this room right now. From front to back, from side to side. Father, I thank you that you healed them all. That by your stripes, we are healed. Jesus, we receive your healing and wholeness right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Daddy. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Just move that part, that back, that arm, that shoulder, that knee. Just move it around and just say, thank you, Jesus, that you are my healer. Jehovah Rophi, the God who heals me. Thank you, Jesus, that I am the healed, that I am a child of God, that I am free from every affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. I have been made free so that I can set others free in the mighty name of Jesus. And on, even until I receive my miracle, I determine to be a miracle for others until my miracle arrives. I thank you for it, Father. And I give you the praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Now, we're going to... Um, Chad and I are just going to stay a little while. And uh, some of you, the point of contact is powerful. Even the, the anointing with oil, I used to use the oil a lot. And it seemed like whenever I had the, it was just that point of contact with that person, that instantly that healing would take place. And so some of you, that might need what needs to happen this morning. We're not going to take a long time. We're not going to do counseling here this morning. But just a simple touch. Uh, do you have oil actually there? Yep. Uh, a simple touch, uh, and God is going to heal you. I, I, I just see it right now. There's ladies here today that you've been barren and unable to have children for whatever reason. I just see uh, children being born to you. Amen. We prayed for a gal that could not have babies, and she had two twins. And uh, God loves babies. Amen. And, and fruitfulness. Amen. And anything else that you're struggling with, uh, heart issues, anything. Uh, God, God's healing that right now. Do you believe that? Amen. And here's the deal, that you don't have to be dependent on a pastor or a Benny Hinn or anybody. You can just go directly. And you know, it, it's not wrong to go to the people, but you can go directly and receive your healing. Amen. And walk in health. Instead of trying to get health, walk in health. Wow. I see this as well. Sound mind. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. You know what causes uh, a troubled mind? It's fear and intimidation. And so right now, I just take authority over the spirit of fear and intimidation that has plagued some of you here today, that causes headaches and heartaches continuously. Your word declares that you have not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, in Jesus' name, or of timidness, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And so we declare the Word of God over our minds today, and we banish fear and intimidation from our minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, that has brought depression and discouragement and despair and even thoughts of suicide, we come against those now in Jesus' name, and we cast them down in Jesus' name, and we speak life over our minds today, our minds that are at peace, in perfect peace, that the Lord has given to us through His shed blood. We claim that for our minds today. We command all depression and suicide to go and life to flow, life more abundant in the mighty name of Jesus. I see callings. I see uh, callings of God on many of your lives. And you know, just sitting on a, in a church every Sunday morning is not what God has called us to for the rest of our lives. We need to be a part of a body. But God wants us to go. The 
power happens when we go, when we move. It's an act of faith. And I believe that God is raising up many of you, five-fold ministry, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, administrators, helps ministries, financial gifts, people that are afflicted with wealth to help the kingdom. God, I thank you for all of those people that are in this room right now and in this church to cause this church, and I just see the expansion here, Pastor Darren, I'm sorry, but uh, this is way too small. Yeah, so there's expansion coming, whatever that looks like, guys. God has blessed you as a church. He's blessed you in so many ways, and at some point, He will require that you act in faith on enlargement. Because when you as the church start going out and doing what we've taught today, there won't be a building big enough in this town to hold you all. Praying for the mayor, praying for the Muslims, praying for the Hindus, praying for the First Nations. Father, I thank you for that. And Father, I thank you for, I just thank you for the anointing on Pastor Darren and Angie. I just see capacity. I just see an increase of capacity on both of you where you have felt like you're at the end of your road, where you've kind of, that you're, you're so full that you don't know. I just see capacity enlargement right now. Capacity enlargement in your thinking, in your conclusions, in everything that you're doing right now. I see enlargement for you materially in Jesus' name and as a, a key leader in this community and this area, not just Lac La Biche, but the whole surrounding area. In Jesus' name. It's so much bigger than what you've, you've seen before. And for you too, Angie. Thank you, Father. Thank you for enlargement in this precious couple. Thank you for their precious daughter, Rachel, that walks right beside them. <laughs> just such a blessing. I just see enlargement in all of you today. Enlargement. A greater capacity. A greater capacity. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Here's a little secret about faith. One of the highest forms of faith is in the preparation. When Noah built the ark, he knew in his mind what he was supposed to do, but nothing was done yet. When he started to draw out the plans for the ark that God was giving him, preparation is the, is the greatest form of faith because nothing exists yet when you start preparing. And God is asking some of you to sit down with a piece of paper and start writing down some of the thoughts that God is giving you about things that He wants you to do. And as you start preparing to do those things, your faith is going to move the heart of God. Cornelius and his family were Italian Roman soldiers and his family, not even born again. It says that in heaven there was a memorial before God for him. He gave alms to the poor, feared God with his family. Amen? And he gave alms, right? And he believed God with his whole family. And God sent Peter, the apostle, to him. God is looking at your faith as well. He wants to build a memorial in heaven of the things that you're believing him for right now. Some of you have witty inventions. God has shown you an invention that's going to make millions of dollars. How about the guy that invented the hula hoop? A piece of plastic. Come on, guys. With a piece of wood in there and it's joined together. Multi-millionaire. God can drop a multi-million dollar uh, uh, thought into your mind, but you must act upon it. Amen? And Father, I just thank you, even for my brother Blaine today. I just love this guy when I met him today. And uh, I, I like golf too, but... Um, I just saw this for you, Blaine, that uh, you're going to have a quick turnaround here. You, you've known the Lord, really given your life to the Lord this last while. But that's what God was waiting for. He couldn't prosper you the way He wants to until you completely gave your life to Him. And uh, I had helped a golfer in Kenya one time. He was my caddy, but he played golf better than I did. So I gave him my clubs, and I took him, I think, two other sets after that, better sets. He played professional golf in Kenya. But he let the prosperity and all that get to him, and it destroyed him. And I just see God 
He wants to use you in a mighty way in professional golf and to be an encouragement. Stuart Payne was a man that loved Jesus and a great golfer. And uh, he wasn't afraid to let the golfing world know that he loved Jesus. And the same for you, brother. You never have to apologize for your faith. The golfing world needs your faith. Amen? And so I just bless you today in your turnaround. That's the word I see is the turnaround. You're, you're in the process of a turnaround. It's not the end. It's just the band-aid. And take the time to really get deep in the things of God and deep into the Word and allow that depth just to go right to your soles of your feet to become who you are. You're going to touch many lives for the gospel in your profession. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I think we're going to just kind of close it down. This is Easter. You're supposed to go home and eat your ham, aren't you? You know, where's the couple from the Crete? Is there somebody from the Crete, the Crete here? Alberta? The Crete? From the Crete? You guys just stay there. Amen. What's your name? Dave? Gabe and Lydia. God bless you guys. The Crete's an awesome place. Yeah, we just planted a church up there about a year ago. I'm going to be preaching there next Sunday, actually. Yeah, Victory Church. Pastor Tanner and Margaret Grindy are pastoring there. And it's a Holy Spirit church there in the Crete, Alberta. How many of you know that the Crete needed a Holy Spirit-filled church? Amen? That believed in the power of God. But Father, I thank you for this couple. And I thank you, Lord, for the mighty men and women that you're raising up in the Crete to do incredible things, to take a, a town that's been steeped in tradition and religion and legalism, and God, bring it into a place of freedom, of miracles and signs and wonders. People healed from the bondages and from the hurt and abuse that's happened there. Years of it. Because that's what always comes out of religion, is hurt, bondage. And I just release you from all the bondage and hurt. And you guys ask forgiveness this morning for those that have hurt you. And as you've done that, I just see the Lord healing you, healing areas of your heart that only you know about, deep hurts, that God is healing in both of you. I had a really close friend in Brooks, Alberta, years ago, his name was Torkelson, and uh, he was a race car driver like I was, but he ended up dying of alcoholism, he was so bitter and so hurt from the, the religion that he was raised under. Religion only bond, puts you in bondage, salvation sets you free, relationship with Jesus sets you free. And I love that brother. I never did beat him. He had a faster car, a Z28. I had a Mach 1. But he died of alcoholism because he was so wounded and hurt. But I see a, just a real deliverance for you guys, setting you free to become everything that's God called you to be as Mennonites. Amen? In Jesus' name, we just cut you loose from all that legalism demonic legalism says he can't won't he never those are lies from the pit of hell the bible says that you can do all things through christ who strengthens you all things that he's asked you to do you can do them no limitations in jesus name amen amen god bless you man yeah. god bless you man you know isn't it amazing who comes to church on sunday we don't know who's sitting next to Cut could be sitting beside you. You wouldn't even know it. <laughs> it's amazing. People are amazing. Uh, and there's just amazing people in this room this morning. Some of you young people. In fact, I want all the young people, if you're, uh, say, five years and up, five years to 20, I want you to come right now. We're just going to lay hands on you right now. Yeah? Wow. Come on, you young guys. Yeah, this is great. This is the next generation, you know. Wow, just line up right in front here. One line. That will be great. Jan, you can come too. We're going to anoint these, this group. Let's give all these young people a big clap. One line. Go right to the end over there. One line, yeah. One line. One line. Wow. Look at these amazing people. Cleo, how old are you? 
How old are you? You're 25. Get up here. Chris, get up here. Amen. Yeah, 25 is good. Oh, you get in line there. I'll just be um, fast with this, but with the area of the unforgiveness, it's a daily thing. You know, your phone could ring tomorrow with that person that you released today and it could hurt you all over again. Okay? Be wise. Know what's been done today. The, en the enemies, let's not be, um, let's not be, let's be aware of the enemy and his tactics. And remember, we can't miss steps. You've been dealing with covenant here. You need to be applying what you're hearing in your lives. You can't miss steps because God made us so he knows what makes us work. See? So be aware tomorrow and the next day and the next day, okay? Amen. So just stretch your hand out towards these guys and just acknowledging a blessing upon them. And uh, these amazing young people, I mean, it just blows me away. You know, my granddaughter, I bought a I, I used a, a journal, and we went to a dollar store and bought these journals. And my granddaughter's 14. She looked at me, and she said to me, she said, Grandpa, that's so you. Another time, I was texting on my phone with one finger. She says, Gramps, you're such a boomer. So I don't even understand their language, but I love them. I love this generation. They're just awesome. They think we're kind of a bunch of old fogies, but that's okay. We've still got something to give them, amen? So, Father, we just thank you for each and every one of these. And I just anoint you as a young person in this church, amen, that you're mighty in God. You're mighty in God, in Jesus' name, that you're everything that God says you are, and you can do everything that God says you can. And you're not going to believe lies anymore about yourself, about what you can't do. And the words can't, won't, and never we're going to banish those from your vocabulary. And you're going to start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't care what color I am. I don't care what, whether I'm male or female. I don't care about any of those things. Men don't determine my destiny. God does. And I have a destiny that's greater than death. I have a destiny that's greater than death. My life is in God's hands. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And each one of these today, we consecrate them and set them aside, God, for your use. This is the next generation that you raised up. All of you are breathing because God wanted you to be here. That's the only reason you're here. When you were conceived in your mother's womb, God said, that's the one I want. And here's the deal. Even if you were conceived by rape, the fact that you're breathing means that God called you. There's no wasted people. We're created in the image and likeness of God himself. In Jesus' name. 